All righty. So you just heard the press conference. What is your reaction? Yay. We're so happy that um, the state's attorney is involved and everyone that's in this process is going to follow it through until justice is served. And that's honestly all we can ask for. What I think is interesting, however, is all the excuses that Spencer Calvert had. You know, he blamed the governor and labor laws. He blamed the workforce that there were none when, in fact, they just weren't getting paid. So a lot in that press conference came to light for us, which really helps us mentally. Now, let me just ask you your feelings at this point for people who are just catching up with this case. The money you've lost, your home wasn't finished, just your gut feeling at this time. It's such a relief. Actually, he worded it all so well at this conference. He couldn't have worded it better. Um, it's really taken such a financial and emotional and physical toll on us and all of the other, you know, our future neighbors. And it's just such a relief finally that this has come to light and that we have the support from the state. And um, it's just a relief. Yes, it is a relief. But at the same time, you know, uh, Leah has a child to send to college, which yeah. now we're dipping into that college fund, which is really difficult. So we're trying to get a loan to finish our house. So how I feel is I'm still very angry. Yes. And also I'm seeing some relief because it's being taken seriously. And now the state's attorney's involved. And I'm, for me, it's like, I'll sleep better at night knowing that this guy's going to be prosecuted. Like, I hope that happens. So when I first met you and the neighbors, I kept hearing the word criminal. Are you surprised there was actually an arrest that it has come to this? I'm I'm glad, surprised, relieved. relieved. I, you know, why did it take a year? Why did it take a year for us to, he was such a great talker that we believed him and all the stories. Why did we take so long? It was our first house we've ever built together or yeah. really. And so we didn't really know. And so this brings awareness to you know, we funded it ourselves and we should have stayed more on top of it, but we trusted, we trusted him. Yeah, no. Yeah. We used our entire life savings because COVID happened, remember, and we're thinking, oh my God, it's Armageddon. Who knows? Let's just have a house that we don't have to worry about working because so many jobs were shut down. I didn't know if I was going to go back to work. You know, look at the restaurants. They closed. Um, we, we had no idea we didn't think we were going to film our next season, but we were able to do that, thankfully. Right. So we used every dime we had to do this. Yeah. And I've heard you address this, but let's talk about it now. Some people would say, oh, she's a big TV star. You have a ton of money. This is just a drop in the bucket. <laughs> not not so for you all. I tell no. people being famous doesn't make you rich. Yes. And it uh, just makes you accountable for your behavior. Yeah. And so. And they knew how hard we worked for every dime. Like I'm a medical esthetician. I have to make money one by one by one for a client. You know, Sandy goes out to sea. It's, it, we work hard. Yeah. The TV show doesn't, it's such, we're not Brad Pitt or Angelia Jolie or right. Jennifer Anderson. We're not one of those people. Like we're a reality. I'm a reality person. It isn't what people think. You could Google it. You'll see. <laughs> we don't have any money. <laughs> so so how much are you going to have to dip into your savings now? I know last time I talked to you, you were getting a total bill on how much you're going to have to pay out of pocket. And that's going to be, that's on you. You now have to pay out of pocket, dipping into your savings way more deeply than you thought. What's the bill going to be for you guys now on top of what you thought it was going to be? We don't have money to dip into. Yes, we used it all. So uh, my UBS account was closed. And um, trying to get I, a loan. Yes, we're trying to get a loan. Um, so I'm working with a friend of mine who's a mortgage broker to try to figure out the construction loan, which is 11%. Yeah. It's 11% is the interest rate. So I'm freaking out like, oh my gosh, it's 11%. How are we going to do this? Yeah. And, even any... oh, and then you, you have an attorney already? Well, okay. we're trying to find one and just even the lawyer fees, like we can't afford it to even defend ourselves in any kind of civil suit or whatever, you know, so it's been just really stressful. Do you yeah. have any idea how much you will have to pay to finish the house? So I six to 800, um, we're just getting the prices in now. I mean, our stucco is going up now, our roof is being finished, but there were people who 
you know, we spent money like every other, every other person in this, the Vista on products that we didn't receive or the contractors didn't get paid. So we have to make that whole and then reorder flooring and tile and everything that we thought was paid for that came with the house. Okay. And when, how late was the house being finished? It was supposed to be done when? 18 months after we signed the contract, we signed it, uh, we signed it March of 2021. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And okay, we kept so having it's friends drive by. Two and... years, two years too late. No, 21, 20. Oh, it's three years yeah. too late. Okay. Yeah. Three years. Okay. So I know how excited you were about moving to Jacksonville. I know you, uh, I know you fell in love with Jacksonville with the Nocatee area, but this is a very sour experience. Are you still excited about moving here, calling this home? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. We're not going to let them take us down. And I, in fact, I think it's brought our community together. Closer together. We got to know the neighbors really quick. <laughs> yeah. I have to adjust the screen. Okay. If you were sitting face to face right now with the builder, Spencer Calvert, what would you tell him? Give Shame us our, on you. Yeah. Give us our <laughs> money back. Yeah. Give us like, money back. give us our money back and don't, you know, he needs to be held accountable. I would say, I want my money back and I want you to make us whole. What he did, what you did, Spencer, is wrong. So admitting that and stop placing the blame on everyone else. Take responsibility for your own actions. I had to when I was an adolescent. I was arrested 14 times. Thankfully, it wasn't a felony, but I was that kid on a merry-go-round of drugs and alcohol. I got clean and sober. I, I took accountability for my behavior. You know, my sponsor's like, you have to pay these people back because I bought furniture years ago from Babcock Furniture and I wasn't paying the bill. I went in front of that manager and sat down and said, I will pay you back. I can only afford $5 a week. I paid that that furniture back for two years at $5 a week because I was very young and I let drugs and alcohol take over. And a part of my restitution was making them whole no matter how much I could afford. And sometimes I could pay $20 a week. So I did it. So I expect that from Spencer. Um, he has a yacht. I don't know that. I, know. I mean, I've never, I've heard, I would like to know the name of it. <laughs> he has, a, a, how about his large home? He has a large home. I've heard he has a plane. I'm not, I don't know. Like I've never, I haven't looked up anything about Spencer because for me, what I want to do now, and Leah and I both agreed, is move on in our lives, let the law do their due, dil due diligence and prosecute, and then we enjoy finishing our home out and live there, hopefully June 1st. That's our goal. I, I promised you guys I wouldn't keep you long, so let me just give you a chance to, if you want to say anything to the investigators, go for it. We want to say thank you to John McGuire, uh, Detective John McGuire. He was really patient and methodical. He, a great guy, like it's someone you want to go boating with. So um, for me, and then I didn't meet everyone else that was on that press conference. I hope to meet them in person when we get there because, and shake their hand and say, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for taking this on and making us whole. Yes. And to not fear, you know, to really stand up for what's right. Um, I found like in the beginning, you know, for me personally, I felt afraid to kind of speak up, you know, because I wasn't really clear on a lot of things. And I think for a lot of people that are watching, you know, if it's wrong, it's wrong. And to, to speak up and do what's right. And that's what Sandy did. That's what I did. And a lot of people in the neighborhood and, um, and it paid off. So we're just not interfering in the investigation and letting them do their job. Yes. I, I know that you guys are tough, strong women, but how much anxiety has this caused you guys lying awake at night? We had our day of crying. We had our days. Right? I had a lot of days of crying. <laughs> but I work in the maritime industry. We, things come at you. You learn how to maneuver and navigate and just continue pointing your bow to true north because you can't allow these on board boats, we have gyro compasses and they spin so fast, they spin off the magnetic, which I say the negative. We have to spin that negative off, negative off and continue to point to true north because our true north is joyous, free and happy. And that's how I want to live my life. Yeah. And we have a strong faith. Um, we believe in God and we prayed a lot yeah. and we 
you know, we just kind of surrendered and uh, to what was out of our control and have faith. And then all of a sudden, you know, God for us opened doors with meeting you and uh, so many people who've been super supportive in this. Yes, because we didn't seek the press. You spoke to my sister and we met. You was, It was going to be a happy story about me moving to Nocatee, right? <laughs> it was going to be yeah, all my it was. moving to Jacksonville. Yeah. Like I know, I know. And your, your sister said, you ought to ask her about her home. She'll pull <laughs> your ear off. And I'm like, well, what's going on? She goes, oh, ask and find out. Then this all opened up. Yeah, so anyway, thank you. Well, thank you all. I appreciate out. your texting me back. When I text you, you text me back and you let me know what's going on. And I know you're speaking for all the neighbors too. Thank you for your time. We'll stay in touch, thank okay? You. Thank and you. happy birthday thank late. You. All right, bye-bye. Thank you. <laughs>